Hello, my name is Nick RP Green, streamer, speedrunner, and the first person to hit sub 32 minutes in the fastest category of Metal Gear Solid. MGS1, PC, any percent, very easy. I was able to obtain this new record through a combination of some new tech developed by the Metal Gear speedrunning community and a new glitch that I discovered with it. In this video, I'll run down what makes Very Easy such a unique category for MGS1 PC, the new tricks that were discovered, and how they can be applied specifically to any percent. Before we get started, a big shout out to the Metal Gear Speedrunners community. Through the website, Discord server, and Twitch channel, this community is the home of speedrunning for every Metal Gear game in the series. So if you're interested in running Metal Gear Solid 1 or any other Metal Gear game, there is a whole community of runners ready to assist you. Visit MetalGearSpeedrunners.com to find out more. In particular, a big shout out to community members GoGo B Man, House Test, and Carrix for their combined effort in developing the new tech and finding new routes with it in Very Easy. Very Easy is a somewhat peculiar category in Metal Gear Solid. To begin with, it's only available on the integral versions of the game, which, for the PlayStation 1, was only made available in Japan. However, it became the basis for the worldwide PC port released in 2000. The difficulty is identical to easy, albeit with two major differences. The FAMAS is replaced with the MP5, a fully automatic silenced rifle with infinite ammo, though still does need to be reloaded. Snake has this weapon from the very start of the game. Secondly, you're not given a score screen showing your time, stats and rank at the end of the game. The latter difference means that Very Easy is the one category in MGS1 that is timed using Real Time Attack, or RTA. The timer starts when you select the difficulty level and ends when the escape timer disappears at the end of the escape sequence. In all other difficulties, the timer ends when the word SCORE is displayed on screen and the in-game time, or IGT, is displayed in the stats and that is the recorded time. Because the other difficulties use IGT, any manipulation of the game outside of the standard controls that would skip otherwise unskippable areas are forbidden. This puts every runner on the same playing field and maintains an accurate in-game timer. As Very Easy is ran in RTA, we're allowed to use such methods as we are encouraged to use any means necessary to beat the game as quickly as possible, and as such, we have two additional tools at our disposal. Briefly withdrawing focus. By running the game's executable in full screen mode, we can withdraw and then re-enable the game's focus by quickly alt-tabbing in and out, or hitting the Windows key twice to open and close the start menu. By doing so, any line of dialogue currently being played will skip to the end. And this is useful for in-game scenes where we are waiting for a line of dialogue to end before the next action takes place. The Area Reloader, also known as the Blank Save File glitch. When saving the game, you may end up creating a blank save file with no name, and if you load it, it will reload the area you are currently in, but maintaining Snake's current state and any event flags that, that have occurred. This is used for several big skips. The file in question should always be created after a certain number of save files have been created, but this number varies by computer. So for consistency sake, an area reloader save file is available in the community save pack, so you can use it from the start. That's what makes Very Easy such a unique category, but why has it never been very popular? Well, for starters, running a game in full screen that doesn't match your native resolution and alt-tabbing out of it isn't often reliable. Anyone who is a big fan of Source games will tell you that. How quickly that action can be taken will vary between computers, and even on the same run, sometimes the executable will just pause and go back, and sometimes it will completely minimise the game and you'll need to wait for it to restore. This means that the category can be very reliant on how well your computer handles this trick, and doesn't offer a level playing field for all runners. Secondly, there are two versions of the game to run, the Reddit Oxide patch or the GOG release. Defocusing can't be done in the GOG version, as the game doesn't fully defocus when you alt-tab away, so very easy runs have to be played on the Reddit version. That version stretches the game to match your desktop's aspect ratio, which can be off-putting to some runners, and also setting up the controls isn't as easy as the GOG version. 
so what's changed? Well, there is a second version of the area reloader. By adding the term dash cheat enable to the executables command line, we unlock the PC version's function key cheats. These include things like giving infinite ammo, restoring health, and a floating camera mode, but it also includes a built-in area reloader mapped to the F7 key, which works exactly the same way as the blank save file. Now, this has actually been known for a long time. The problem has always been that enabling the function key cheats disables the game's weapon hotkeys. As you may or may not know, the PC version allows you to switch between weapons using the number keys across the top of the keyboard instead of opening the weapon menu with R2. This is used in all categories to activate the God Mode exploit, or GME, which turns Snake invulnerable and allows him to go out of bounds. Enabling the F7 area reloader while sacrificing this key exploit just wasn't an option. But recently, community developer GoGoB Man created a patch for the game which removed the flag that disabled the weapon hotkeys if the function key cheats were enabled, meaning we can now use both. The community agreed that as a quality of life change, this patch can be used for very easy so that we don't have to open the save menu and it saves a small bit of time. If you would like to grab that patch, a link can be found in the description below. So, like I said, we can now use the area reloader without going into the pause menu to load a save. But that should only save a couple of seconds each time, what's the big deal? Well, not only can we avoid having to open the menu, we can now also use the area reloader at any time, including moments where we wouldn't normally be able to open the pause menu. Mainly, this means we can use it during in-game scenes, cutscenes that aren't pre-rendered videos or animations, but real-time animations running in the game that we normally can't skip as long as it doesn't just reload to a moment before that animation is played. This opens up a bunch of new time saves. Now, the following are almost all of the simple area reloads that we can now do in any percent, including the ones that we used to do with the save file. Once you grab the PSG-1 in the armory, teleporting you back to the lift, but keeping the weapon. as soon as Snake's life bar finishes growing when entering the nuke building first floor. As soon as Snake's life bar finishes growing when entering the commander's room. As soon as Snake's life bar finishes growing after defeating Vulcan Raven. If you get a bad PAL key ditch location, as soon as the PAL key text disappears from picking it up. Reloading before the text disappears means that the control room door won't be open when you go back to it. When the cutscene of the control room door opening after Otacon has unlocked it starts playing, during Phase 1 of Metal Gear Rex, during Grey Fox's speech between Phases 1 and 2 of Metal Gear Rex. This used to be skipped by defocusing the game, but using the area reloader is now quicker and safer. During Phase 2 of Metal Gear Rex, and as we never fight Rex, we don't have to pick up the Stinger Launcher. Remember, these are only the uses in any percent. There are many more uses in all bosses, but that's for another video. You may have noticed that I didn't include the capture sequence in that list. This is because the capture sequence is quite complicated, but also it's the biggest route change and time save I made for my world record run. So I want to break it down fully for you. In the old route, we'd make a codec call to trigger an in-game flag, then area reload through the start menu, skipping to the cutscene of Otacon giving Snake the level 6 card and the ketchup. We'd then have to wait for the in-game scene of Otacon leaving to play out, We'd then drop the ketchup on the floor, which would teleport Johnny to us, and he'd have figured out the trick, though we'd skip that dialogue by defocusing. Then he'd get the runs, and we'd defocus to skip that dialogue, and then the ninja would save us. The whole capture sequence would take just under a minute and a half. The new route, which saves about 15 to 20 seconds, is as follows. 
As soon as you load into the MediRoom, hit select before Johnny sneezes, as you can't enter the codec whilst the character is delivering a line of dialogue. Master Miller's number will be ready, as he was the last person who called you, so call him, skip the call, exit the call, and then reload. Hold X to skip the cutscene of Otacon giving Snake the card and ketchup. It is vitally important you do not skip this cutscene with the area reloader, as the cutscene ending is the flag for Snake receiving the level 6 card. Skipping with the area reloader will reload to this room but after that cutscene and you will have softlocked the game as Snake won't have the level 6 card and cannot escape. Reload during the in-game scene of Otacon running away. Johnny will automatically be back and will be on a time of him to run off to the toilet again. Open your item menu and eat the ketchup. Do not spill it onto the floor. The ketchup also works the same way as a ration, meaning you can eat it if you're not at full health. This means that whilst alert farming in the docks at the start of the game, you need to have deliberately taken some damage. By eating the ketchup, when Johnny runs off to the bathroom, the game will recognise that you no longer have the ketchup in your inventory and will send the ninja to rescue you, though you'll still have to answer a mandatory codec call from Campbell. If you don't eat the ketchup, or if you smear it on the floor, Johnny will return normally as the game assumes you should be attempting to trick him with it. Finally, escape the prison, flipping Johnny to knock him out, and swim using the MP5 and chaff grenades to skip the animation of Snake putting his suit back on. If you don't know what Swapping Weapons Infinite Momentum, or SWIM, is, this was a new trick discovered for the PC version in early 2021, used in all PC categories that allows Snake to keep moving forward during in-game scenes. For a quick 90 second explanation, check out the video in the card shown in the top right, or in the video description. To assist with SWIM in very easy, I map 2, the hotkey for the MP5, to R2 on my DualShock 4, as we never need to open the weapon menu. I then have 9, the hotkey for the chaff grenade, mapped to the PlayStation button, meaning I can swim at any time by holding R2 and tapping the PlayStation button. This is useful for escaping capture, skipping Wolf 2, and getting out of the control room. There is one more use for the area reloader, a glitch I discovered, which I had originally named the Nick Eater skip, <laughs> get it, due to its use in all bosses, but as soon as I discovered it had other uses, I settled on the name the Elevator Reload. When you ride in the tank hangar or nuke building elevator, the game loads the room you're moving into in two stages. Just as the elevator arrives, it plots Snake's relative position in the room and loads the environment. However, it's only when the camera switches away from the control panel that the game then sets the flag for the start of the room. This means that if we use the area reloader as soon as the elevator arrives, the game will reload at the last start of room flag, which is the floor we've just come from. But it will retain Snake's relative location in this new room. As the elevator's relative room position on the two floors are different, Snake will reload in a different location, and on both elevators, the first floor elevator is in a very different location to the other two floors. So here's what happens at the different floors when using the elevator reload glitch. Tank hangar. First floor to B1 or B2. Snake will be positioned out of bounds just to the right of the elevator, this is usable in all bosses to get to the canyon quicker than using the vent glitch. B1 to first floor. Snake will be positioned out of bounds to the top left of the elevator. This is usable in any percent to get to the many room quicker than using the vent glitch. B2 to first floor. Snake will be positioned out of bounds to the top left of the elevator. Unfortunately, this has no benefit as we'd still need C4 to get to the Ocelot boss fight in all bosses, but further exploration may find a use for it. The room positions of the B1 and B2 elevators are very similar, and using the glitch between these floors results in Snake still being in the elevator. Nuke building. First floor to B1. 
Snake will be positioned in the middle of the room. Unfortunately, the act of going back down the elevator to trigger the glitch means that this is not quicker than just running the room normally. First floor to B2. Snake will be positioned inside a pillar, trapped and unable to escape. B1 to first floor. Snake will be positioned on top of the room and can't do anything. B1 to B2. Snake will be positioned out of bounds to the top right of the elevator. This can be used to get into the commander's room early. However, as we haven't received the level five card from Merrill, we're now trapped in this corridor. Mr. Foxhound, the commander is waiting. B2 to B1. Snake will be positioned inbounds just outside the elevator. B2 to first floor. Snake will be positioned out of bounds to the top left of the elevator. This is usable in all bosses to get to the ninja fight early without the need to pick up the Nikita launcher and fire a Nikita at the electrical box to get rid of the electrical floor. This is how I first discovered the glitch, hence the original name of the Nick Eater skip. Using this does however mean we have to fight Vulcan Raven with grenades. So right now, any percent only has one use for this glitch, which saves about five to 10 seconds. All bosses has two uses for this glitch, which saves about 45 to 50 seconds. If we can find a way of using the armory version to get to Ocelot early, we could potentially skip the guard encounter in the cell, saving even more time. But more explanation is required to see if this is even possible. So that's how the new area reloader patch has changed the very easy route. With these changes and a near perfect run, sub 31 is possible and hopefully we'll see more runners submitting runs in what is a very interesting category. As I said at the top, this is the fastest category across all versions of Metal Gear Solid 1 and it deserves this new attention. And this video mainly focused on any percent. There's even more time to be saved in all bosses. Thank you very much for watching this guide. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and check out the other guides on my channel. I also stream at twitch.tv forward slash nickrpgreen every Tuesday and Thursday from 8 p.m. UK time. So give me a follow over there sometime. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.